I'll kind of explain what I mean by that. So when you guys assemble the equation, and in the equation, you have to do the exact same thing. You're solving for this. Whatever, the only difference between these two problems is the theta and theta divided by 2. Would everybody agree with me? But that theta divided by 2 is inside the function, OK? So when it's inside the function, don't worry about it until the very, very end. So we do the exact same thing. We add 1 to both sides. Then we divide by 2 on both sides. And we get sine of theta divided by 2, or sine squared of theta, equals um, 1 half. We square root. And we get sine of theta divided by 2 equals plus or minus, as we showed over here, the square root of 2 over 2. You guys notice I basically just totally didn't even care about pi over 2. I did everything exactly the same. Does everybody see that? They're basically exactly the same. Then I even solve it like it's a theta. I don't even, it doesn't even matter. Solve for, how do I write that? solution so we're not solving for theta in this problem we're now solving for theta divided by 2. You guys agree with me? Okay so when you're solving for this now you need to still solve for theta guys you don't solve for like x divided by 2 right you solve for x so we need to undo dividing by 2 so we need to multiply by 2. Zero and two pi. Okay, three half, three pi half. Yeah, five pi half. Though, think about it. What's all the way halfway around the circle is two pi over two, right? That'd be pi. All the way around the circle would be two pi, which is equivalent to four pi over two. So five pi over two is too big. Or if you want to look at the other circle, one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves. That's bigger than two pi, right? So that is not a solution anymore. 7 pi is definitely not a solution. So the only solution to this equation is pi halves and 3 pi halves. Okay? Yes. Sure. 